As humans, we are obsessed with unsolved crimes and troubling mysteries. Mysteries that leave questions lingering as years pass without an arrest or even a credible suspect. When a crime case goes cold and never gets solved, it can become incredibly frustrating yet intriguing. The victims never get the justice they deserve, their loved ones never get closure, and law enforcement officers are tormented for the rest of their lives with questions without answers. Without further ado, here are some of the most fascinating cases that remain unsolved to this day. The Soder Children In 1945, on Christmas Eve in Fayetteville, West Virginia, the Soder children and their parents, George and Jenny, went to bed on that fateful night, when just after midnight, the house caught fire. The flames moved fast. George, Jenny, and four of the Soder children managed to get out safely. George injured himself in his efforts to rescue the other five children named Maurice, Martha, Louis, Jenny, and Betty. But the crazy part is that despite his attempt, he would have never been able to save them because no one ever found the sign of the children inside again. No charred bones, nothing. As if the children had just magically vanished. The case of the missing Soder children is little known outside West Virginia today. It is one of those mysteries that might stir pages of message board discussion on the internet, but that's basically it. The mysteries surrounding the Soders have accumulated throughout the years. Theories that the children were taken and sent to different homes under different names, or some other theories say that the father, George, had anti-fascist views that led to a kidnapping and firebombing. But there was no innocent reason for those children to vanish into the night. Something happened to them, something secret, and no one ever learned what that was. The Ice Box Murders On June 23, 1965, after receiving a call for a welfare check on Fred and Edwina Rogers, two Houston police officers knocked on the front door of their Montrose home before kicking it in. Inside, one of the officers opened the fridge and discovered what he thought were stacks upon stacks of hog meat. That unfortunately was far from the grisly reality. An article from the Amarillo Globe Times published the next day, describing the scene that on all the shelves and in the freezer compartment were the dismembered bodies cut in unwrapped, washed off pieces smaller than individual joints. The officers later realized that what they were dealing with were two human heads. Sadly, those human heads belonged to Fred Christopher Rogers and his wife Edwina Iber Rogers that were brutally killed and dismembered, having their body parts stored in the family refrigerator or icebox. Investigators later concluded that Edwina had been shot in the head while Fred had been beaten to death with a hammer before both were dragged to the master bathroom, drained of blood, chopped into pieces and placed in the fridge. The main suspect was 43-year-old Charles Rogers, who was son to Edwina and Christopher, a recluse who only communicated with his parents via notes slipped under his bedroom door and was rarely seen by neighbors. The house had been carefully cleaned, but blood was discovered on the keyhole of his bedroom door. Sadly, the police didn't get a chance to speak with Charles, who was searched for in a nationwide manhunt, but he was never seen or heard from again. There were many claims as to Rogers' fate. Some say he was in the CIA and had a connection to the Kennedy assassination, but what we do know is that he fled to Central America where he was later killed. Regardless of what really happened, he was declared legally dead in 1975. Later investigations say that Charles was physically and emotionally abused by his parents well into adulthood, and that at the end of their lives they were defrauding him by forging his signature on deeds of land that he owned. This goes to prove that you should be careful who you live with, and remember that what goes around might come around in the worst possible way. The Missing Girls of Fort Worth Mary Rachel Trillica, Julie Ann Mosley, and Lisa Renee Wilson headed out to the mall on the night of December 23, 1974. Mary Rachel was the oldest at 17, Renee was 14, and Julie was 9. They were taking care of some last-minute holiday shopping like many others do at that time of the year at the Seminary South Shopping Mall. Sadly, and creepily though, they were never seen again. A note was later mailed to Mary Rachel's husband Tommy that said in part, We're going to Houston. See you in about a week. The car is in Sears' upper lot. That note, doubtfully, was from Mary Rachel since her last name was misspelled, 
and police, originally thinking they were dealing with a simple disappearance, didn't dust the car for prints, and several other opportunities were missed to gather helpful evidence as well. One of the theories regarding the girl's disappearance points to Mary Rachel's husband, which had been involved with her sister Deborah romantically, claiming she could have been responsible for this sudden disappearance. Police reportedly do believe one thing is true. They believe the trio left Seminary South Mall with someone they knew, someone they trusted. Only the people involved will know exactly what happened after that. Jack the Ripper, terrorizing London. You probably have already heard of him multiple times throughout your life. And if you haven't, you probably live under a rock. But we here at Mindspun are here to help you with the history lesson. London's most notorious serial killer prowled the East End over a century ago, preying on prostitutes and terrorizing the area. Dread grew as the dead bodies began to pile up near each other within a three-month period in 1888. By mutilating and killing at least five women, he made his mark as Jack the Ripper. Due to his signature and gory method of murder, and his skill with a knife, local authorities at first wondered whether the suspect was a butcher or a doctor. We can see this example with the victims of the so-called Whitechapel murders that all had their throats slashed and most of them had their stomachs slit and organs ripped out before being dumped on the streets. The FBI, which analyzed the case in 1988, funny enough, at the behest of a movie production company, said each victim was known to be a heavy drinker and a prostitute. They were all targeted because they were readily accessible and were killed swiftly in the early morning hours. Even with all eyes on the case, police were never able to put a face to the killer. The FBI said local investigations were obstructed because of forensic technology and other advanced means of thoroughly investigating homicides were non-existent at the time. Countless historians and criminologists, both amateur and professional, have speculated on the killer's identity but it appears Jack the Ripper took his secret to the grave. The Black Dahlia's Grizzly Death Another famous unsolved crime that we had to mention on this list is the Black Dahlia murder, which if you are a metalhead will recognize it as a famous death metal band's name as well. But we are not here to talk about that. We are here to talk about the now infamous slaying of 22-year-old Elizabeth Short that instantly captured headlines in 1947 with newspapers later dubbing her the Black Dahlia, in part because she had dark hair and an apparent preference for black clothing. A Massachusetts native who had come to California in pursuit of fame was bled dry before being dumped in an empty lot in a residential area of Los Angeles. Her body appeared professionally dissected and one breast was cut off, according to FBI records. It is unclear how the aspiring actress met such a grisly fate Several dozens of people have claimed credit for the high-profile crime. The FBI, which helped local authorities investigate at the time, said it ran record checks on potential suspects and conducted interviews across the nation. However, none of the confessors appeared to be telling the truth, and the shocking case has gone unsolved to this day. The Zodiac Killer The Zodiac Killer was no ordinary murderer. Rather than avoiding the spotlight, he craved media attention and seemed to enjoy taunting police with cryptic notes and clues as he left the trail of death behind him. The Zodiac Killer murdered five people, seemingly at random, in Northern California in 1968 and 1969. He sent letters to the police stating that there were a dozen more victims, although that was never confirmed. His deadly rampage began in December 1968 when two teenagers were shot to death in a parking lot. About seven months later, another two people were shot in a parked car, although one survived. That's when local newspapers started getting letters from someone anonymously claiming to be responsible for the slayings according to the San Francisco Examiner, which had received the cryptic notes. The newspaper said the letters contained coded messages explaining the killer's motive as well as a key to help readers decipher his identity. This is the Zodiac speaking, he wrote in an August letter. I like killing people because it is so much fun, he added, according to FBI records. It is more fun than killing wild game in the forest because man is the most dangerous animal of all. Authorities never did crack the code revealing his name, 
and the Zodiac Killer went on to stab two more people in late September. One of the victims survived luckily, and the other one sadly died. About two weeks later, the killer struck again, fatally shooting a 29-year-old taxi driver. Days later, the Zodiac mailed a piece of his latest victim's bloody shirt to the Chronicle newspaper. To this day, no suspects have been confirmed in the case, but the San Francisco Police Department said the investigation is ongoing. We might never find out who committed these crimes, but we must never lose hope, as new information becomes available with the passing of time. These cases should never go cold, and we must fight to find the justice these victims deserve. If you liked this video, please help us by hitting the like button and comment below what you would want us to talk about next. Also, feel free to subscribe to stay on top of our new videos that will be coming out every week.